Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. If there was ever one you wanted to press the record button for, it's this one. Coming up this fall, Amendment 64, making le weed legal. And the oddest proponent I've ever seen, you know him, you love him, Tom Tancredo, glad to have you. Well, thank you very much, but you've used that, used that term many yeah, times. Yeah, really. Oddest and but proponent, opponent, whatever. Are, are you just lacking for the attention? Exactly, what am I going to do? Does your wife thought? not talk to you and, <laughs> and you need to do this stuff? She keep, if I keep this up, she may yeah. not be talking yeah. to me. <laughs> and from the wonderful county of Weld, our district attorney up there, Ken Buck, and former United States Senator candidate, Glad to have you here. Thanks. It's great to be here. Now with, the with question, Tom also. The question is, which one is you is pro pot and which one's against? Uh, let's start over here. What? Tell uh, me about. I tell gotta me. Got to take the pro side. Darn. Tell, tell me what the proposal does first, and then I want to know why. Why a good staunch, uh, card carrying NRA member like you would 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 support this? Well, it it uh, allows for people to have in their possession up to an ounce of marijuana. Uh, for use in their home, it can't sm you can't smoke it in public. Can't have more than that. It um, it uh, legalizes hemp production, which is a whole kind of different topic, but nonetheless one that needs to be addressed. And really, I, you know, that's kind of the basic idea here is to move it uh, closer and closer to legalization generally, because it's the the war on uh, drugs. Certainly, the war on marijuana has failed. Um, miserably. We are spending literally hundreds of billions of dollars, have spent hundreds of billions of dollars, thousands of lives, of course it's cost both in Mexico and in the United States. Um, we, but more than that, John, <laughs> from my point of view and why I am supporting More it, than that, Tom Tancredo cannot get good weed anymore. <laughs> and if we don't, <laughs> if we don't, if we don't make some quality control, control measure measures. here, you know, no, I uh, believe this or not, I have never smoked a joint in my life. And, oh, really? And I went to school in you want the late '60s in just go college. To, go to the DA's evidence locker. Don't worry, Ken's, Ken's <laughs> got some. It, I think yeah. he's been yeah. using it himself. Yeah. It's been missing. I don't know Thanks, where it's going. Yeah. We needed another rumor. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so it'll get you a whole other set of voters. <laughs> Take two. Take <laughs> two. As, as a law and order kind of guy, and you're a law, law and order kind yeah. of guy. What about? This, in general, let's, before we get into the proposal itself and the nuts and bolts, in general, why is this a, a, a big issue for you? Because it goes to exactly why I'm a conservative and why I have fought for years for the idea that the government has absolutely no right to tell me things like what I should, ing what I can ingest, how many ounces of Pepsi Cola I can drink, um, what I can eat. And a variety of other things that just have that has absolutely nothing to do with the government role. If you consider the government role to be simply the defense of, of property and innocent life, you know it, it's the Constitution is very clear. It, it is a restraining document, and it says here's what you can do, um, but mostly it says well here's what you can't do, government, and. In no way should the government be involved with these kinds of decisions. I stand with Milton Friedman, um, William F. Buckley, uh, Sarah Palin, Pat Robertson, uh, and a whole host of other conservatives who have said the government doesn't have a role to play here. Bring it over here to the Dean Wormer of, of the pot movement. So I know you're a strong law, law and order guy. You're the guy who, who takes people who break these drug laws and, and, you, and you punish them. Why is this important to you? It wouldn't let, let's just talk about the general concept before we get into 64. If weed was legalized, if marijuana was more like alcohol, wouldn't your job be easier? And that uh, this it, it would be out in the open. It would be legal. You wouldn't have to put your resources into busting guys with less than an ounce of marijuana, and you could focus on bigger, badder things. John, let me let me first comment. Uh, the The idea that uh, an ounce will be legal um, sounds innocuous. An ounce is 60 joints. It's eight pans of brownies. It's not a small amount of marijuana. A heavy user would go through 20 joints a month. So it's three months of, of marijuana that would be um, in someone's uh, uh, possession. Um, serious issue. 
as a strong law enforcement guy, I, I'll tell you right now, um, d drugs are at the bottom line of 80, 90 percent of the crime that we see in our country. Um, about 45 to 50 percent of the people that are arrested in the United States test positive for marijuana. An even higher percentage, around 65 percent, test positive for some drug at the time they're I, arrested. I used to be in the music industry. The percentages were much higher. Uh, I, I believe it. I believe it. And maybe that's part of the, the uh, creativity uh, factor. But um, you're asking why I feel so strongly. I feel so strongly because I see so much drug use um, with criminals, and, and I think this would increase the amount of drug use. Well, let, let, let me push this for a second. I, I look at smoking, and it wasn't too long ago in our lifetimes where most of Americans smoked cigarettes, legally, cheaply, and they weren't turned illegal. There was a campaign to educate, and now about 20 percent of Americans and falling smoke. I mean, this it is going down and down and down and down. Why wouldn't marijuana use be the same? Hard alcohol, it's the same thing. Hard alcohol use goes down and down and down as, as we get older and wiser, and people seem to get get the information. Wouldn't the same thing happen with with marijuana as it has with, with scotch? It, it would happen if we had an education program, perhaps, if we had an education program and they really let people know the the downside of uh, of using marijuana. And I don't know if that offends those that, and I'm also offended by the Pepsi Cola, you know, you can't have more than 16 ounces or whatever uh, Bloomberg said in New York City. But I, I think uh, the, the reason that we have less, out, uh, less tobacco use now is because we've had a, a huge campaign. The reason we have less drunk drivers now is because we've had a huge uh, public education campaign. And, and um, it, could something like that work on marijuana, perhaps? Um, but it, doesn't, uh, it, it wouldn't necessarily need to be legal in order for something like that to well, what, work. What do you say to the conservatives? I mean, you, you, Tom listed you know, heroes of mine, Milt Friedman and, 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 uh, Buckley. Uh, and Buckley. These 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 are these are hardcore conservatives. Even social conservatives, Sarah Palin, Pat Robertson, although whatever Pat Robertson says, you, you, know, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Does that sway you at all? It doesn't. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, my, my friend Tom Tangredo being in favor of it um, gives me pause. My friend Sean Mitchell being in favor of it gives me pause. The fact that I'm on the same side as the teachers union and Governor Hickenlooper and, and the, the Denver, Denver Post. Post and, and the Denver Post. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's, let's stop talking to him for a second. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's the side of, yeah. of the drug cartels. Yeah. The nanny staters and the Denver, Denver Post. Post. <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems to transcend then what, what, what is traditional left and right. And I'm starting to see more movement on people on the right, and you mentioned several of them, so starting to say this is, this is, getting, this is getting ridiculous. Um, and so there's an odd coalition being, being formed here. But, hey, you think he's odd being with the Denver Post? You're with a bunch of stoners right now. <laughs> yeah. you know, let me tell you, he can go to a cocktail party. You, you, can, you can only go to a Grateful Dead show. <laughs> well, I luckily don't have to actually socialize necessarily <laughs> with all the people that are on the side. Uh, although some of them that I've met in this, uh, in this arena now are nice enough people. But, no, I wouldn't be socializing with them. And I, if it were legal, I probably wouldn't smoke it. It's not something I have any inclination to do or ever have. And it's irre but it's irrelevant as to whether I want to do it or not. It is whether or not I should be able to do it as an adult. It, it just, just boggles my mind that as conservatives, anybody can make a case against that aspect. Now, you can certainly, I, and I totally agree that we should do anything necessary, uh, you know, because it's not a good, I don't think people should take it. I don't think kids should take it. I don't think adults should use it or any kinds of, of drugs. I do, in fact, take uh, two glasses of wine just about every night with my dinner, and that right. might be my drug Two. of choice. But it's, I'm Italian; I have absolutely you have no, no choice in the matter. matter. On that, so, we can agree. Let's talk a little bit about the medical marijuana. We've had this now for for a decade. It took several years, really, for it to shake out through the courts to find out what's legal, what's not. We're seeing a lot of municipalities saying, "Not in not in my neighborhood." But let's let's admit. I would argue half the people that are on the registry don't need it. They're <laughs> recreational users. Has has the medical marijuana experience shown that? Well, you can do it legally, and it, and it works, so let's just legalize the rest, or has it shown quite the opposite, that, that it doesn't work? I, I think that the original concept of mar medical marijuana um, passed because of, there was a lot of sympathy for the, the uh, terminal cancer patient, for the person with glaucoma. Baldness. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think that helps. Sorry about that. <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> but I, I do think that uh, there is a, uh, what, what happened um, about five, six years ago when the, when the legislature started the dispensary method, I think opened the door for marijuana. We see more kids using it, more kids expelled, more kids suspended. And, and that's really my, my biggest problem is the, the use among kids. If there was some guarantee that kids wouldn't use this or there was some um, fail-safe method that we could you know, employ to, to stop does, kids. Does the argument that you never see a shootout over a Coors Light truck and it's hard for kids to buy booze um, that over time those those issues will be addressed. It's a whole lot easier now for a kid go to any high school for a kid to get a joint than a six pack. You know, if if it's legal, doesn't that make it easier to enforce? Therefore, it'll be open and above board, and nobody's going to lose their license by selling to somebody who's under 21. I mean, it, if if it works for for booze. Why won't it work for, for pot, the, the method of d distribution? I don't think it does work for booze. Um, it's also easy to go to high school and find a, a bottle of vodka, a flavored vodka, and it's also easy to find a six-pack of beer. Um, and, and alcohol and marijuana are fundamentally different. The idea, and, and it is, it is uh, genius in, in mislabeling this, um, let's regulate marijuana like alcohol. Marijuana is not like alcohol. It's more addictive. It's more harmful. It has more impact on a juvenile's brain. And so that's really the, the issue that I've got with it. But I, don't, I think that there are two things that stop a young person from using drugs, those that don't use drugs. One is availability and the other is stigma. When they see adults using marijuana on a regular basis, they're going to think it's okay using it. And when it's more available, uh, they're going to be okay using it. So there's going to be a higher percentage of kids using marijuana. Is this on par with alcohol to you? Uh, absolutely not. Alcohol is much more dangerous than marijuana. And you can uh, look at the statistics and show that the fact is, right now you've got literally thousands of kids across the nation that are binge drinking, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, I don't know, but many of them suffering grave consequences, including death, as a result of this. We know what alcohol does um, to, to the psyche and to the physical body, and certainly I don't suggest for a moment that marijuana is like a medicinal product. I don't think you know, it can treat things, you know, med med medical marijuana can be used for this, but in reality, most people who would use it are not using it to treat any disease, they're using it to get high. But the difference is, to, to date, not a single human being in recorded history has ever overdosed on marijuana, you know, and, and died or anything else. So it is not as dangerous. And interestingly, fascinatingly, since the medical marijuana uh, uh, thing has passed here in Colorado, since we've had it, According to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, usage among teenagers in Colorado has gone down 11%. Now, I do not know. I, I cannot tell you that there is a direct correlation that because we have medical marijuana legal, usage has gone down. All I can tell you is usage has not gone up because we've had it. Let me ask you if... Uh, oh, and the, can I tell you yeah, one, one other thing before I forget? Um, we were doing... Potheads a, forget a lot. <laughs> I know. i got to write it down. <laughs> That's why I have the paper. Um, we were down at uh, um, the, Colorado, the Gazette Telegraph down in Colorado Springs doing an uh, editorial board meeting, and one of the individuals there said that they had called Focus on the Family to find out where they were on this, because they were, of course, big opponents the last time. Uh, they were opponents of medical marijuana. And they told them, at least this is what we heard, we were told, that... Um, indeed, they were not going to oppose it this time, and that the reason that, that they were not opposing it, that focus on the family was not opposing it, is because everything they predicted about medical marijuana turned out not to be true. Tell me a little bit about if marijuana is okay, well, then comes the next question. Sure. You know, so if that's okay, and you said uh, you don't want the government telling you how big your sodas need to be and what to put in your body, you know the question. Sure. Not only do, is the claim that this is a gateway drug that gets you into a higher stuff, but doesn't the same logic apply to Coke, to meth, well, to everything else? Theoretically, yes, absolutely. If you're going to be truthful about the, the, you know, the basis of your objection to, uh, in, in terms of the government telling you what to do and what to do yourself, yes. The reality is that there is no doubt about it, that there are drugs far more dangerous than marijuana. Uh, we are trying to change public policy here. And, and, you know, this issue is just about marijuana, nothing else. And so I think it is important for us to focus on that. And you know what? If nothing else, 
the states are supposed to be the laboratories of democracy. And, and this is a big philosophical debate across the nation and public policy debate across the nation and should be. The decisions should be made at the state level and we can see. And I'm, I think we are doing that little by little. We did it with mer medical marijuana, but it's interesting to note, John, that, the f that 80 years ago, this state, Colorado, preceded the federal government in passing a constitutional amendment to repeal prohibition 80 years ago. All first right. State. That must have been the original Adolf Kors taking right. care of that one. All right. Let's, <laughs> to, to, to bring it here, I, I understand that. Can I just respond yeah, to one point? And, and, and that is, I, I, I think the states are the laboratory for democracy, and I think California should pass this. And, and, in, ten, <laughs> and in, in 10 years, we should see how it's going and make a decision. But I don't think Colorado should be the guinea pig for this issue. All right, with about 10 minutes left, let's, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this because, you know, the devil's in the detail. Advocate. Devil's in the detail. <laughs> and so, is there, is there a technical reason? Or, is, it, or is, your, is your objection purely that you don't want legalized pot and it doesn't matter what they wrote, or are there problems with the, with the language itself? Um, I, my, my objection is, number one, the effect on kids, number two, the effect on business, and number three, that it's in the Constitution. So a, a technical issue, I guess, would be the fact that it's in the Constitution. I think one of the reasons that states are the laboratory for democracy is that the legislatures, the elected representatives, um, can make decisions and can tinker with things and move things around. This puts something in the Constitution. And I think they did that on purpose because they were afraid that the legislature would come in and repeal part or, or all of this. Um, but I think we, we've got to be realistic. This, as the first state, we're going to learn, if, we, if this passes, we're going to learn a lot, and we're going to learn a lot very quickly, and we're not going to be able to go back to the voters in time and, and try to make a constitutional amendment to take care of that. It's just a, it is a bad way to legislate. You say it's bad for the kids. I understand your argument there. You say it's bad for business. I, I'm missing that one. Wouldn't this be great for business? Not only would you have a new industry that's paying taxes, uh, and I keep hearing we don't have enough tax money, but wouldn't it spring a new industry, a new new commerce? Wouldn't there be tourism that comes in here for people who who, uh, who for want all to the buy right it? reasons? For all the right reasons. Well, you know, the, the, the enrollment at CU would go up. Trust me, there's plenty at CU. <laughs> I, my alma mater, it it was a medical marijuana dispensary before medical marijuana. <laughs> You know, how is it bad for business? Well, it, it's bad for business in two ways. One, our brand. Um, if a business is leaving bankrupt California and is trying to decide to come to Texas or Colorado, uh, Texas is immediately going to talk about Colorado's brand as Rocky Mountain High. We are not going to have um, the, the same image that we have now, which is a healthy, well-educated well state. And the second way it's bad for business is there is so much uncertainty about the uh, the law of employee, employee um, employer relations uh, that Will, that will come out of this that, that I think we are going to see lawyers benefit far greater than uh, schools or others from, from uh, this, this becoming legal. Why put it in the Constitution? I, I mean, I mean this, we, yeah, we, what we, you said was, I understand where you're going, and what you said was, I think, accurate, or, or I think what Ken said about why, I think was accurate. I'm sure that the authors of this, which I was not, I did not, nobody asked me to, to participate in the development of this. You're just a showgirl. I'm just, You're Vanna <laughs> just White for this. You know. The eye candy. Yeah. 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 Eye candy. <laughs> um, no, this, what I was going to say is, I was going to, I was t agreeing with you, I was saying that I think what he's right. I think it was because they didn't want legislature to very, take it with it. It does make it but very rigid, though. It does. But then the next thing you brought up, the issue of businesses and all of the you know all of the conflicts in terms of that might arise with people smoking dope on it's important that it is in the constitution because there's a provision a very very clear provision of this that says that no business can can be um, challenged on the basis of the decisions they make with their employees regarding this issue regarding marijuana. So in other words in other words if if I've got an employee and he's a stoner I can fire him Absolutely. for being a stoner. Yes. So it's not telling me as a businessman, I got to hire somebody, and that, this is a and protected. This is a protected class. Exactly, this is race. it is not. That's one reason why it's good that it is in the Constitution. Bad for business. Well, uh, plenty of. I think there are plenty of high-tech businesses <laughs> that are run by people who are, um, let's say. Yeah, who I are not I, afraid of this of this particular. I have a feeling thing. that Stephen Jobs yeah. wouldn't would be. I don't know. I, I think that I, I really believe that people 
will either choose to come to Colorado or not to come to Colorado because of the business environment and not because of the, uh, uh, of the degree of marijuana that they might smell when they drive past the border. What Choo is, choosing a dead yeah. person is an example of, of uh, pro-marijuana yeah. argument. I'm <laughs> not, not sure is a great idea. Maybe not. But let, let me ask you, where is it going to come from? With the end of Prohibition and before Prohibition, you had Adolf Coors here, one of the Colorado originals, and he built a business. He survived Prohibition. They brought it back, and he had a distribution chain. Here are the farmers. Here are the manufacturers. We distill it here. We sell it there. Where does this stuff come from? Because as I read it, you can have it, but it's not legal to make it. Yeah, is I, it? Think it, I think it is. I think that you can raise um, six plants. If I'm, not, I'm trying to six. remember what was in there. But, um, yeah, there is some, something about the, the growing of, of marijuana, I think it's, and which is, I think, the, the same thing what we have, as we have now about medical marijuana. That's the, um, the degree to which it can be cultivated. Isn't it odd, just in general, this is a prohibition against literally a weed. They call it a weed because it grows in so many places. It's a leaf. You know, tobacco we have. This we have, um, uh, we have a prohibition against. Does, how, how do you, how, has, has the drug war been successful? Because I don't see that it has. You keep asking me three questions. Yeah, I know, I'm Let sorry. Me, I'll choose which it, one I want to answer. I'm stoned, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> has the drug war been successful? It has not been as successful as most of us in this country would like to see it. Um, I think that the, the truth is that we have spent a whole lot of resources on limiting supply, and we haven't done a very good job on figuring out um, how to deal with the demand side of, of the issue. Um, you, you mentioned that you know I'm a, I'm a prosecutor in northern Colorado, and I put people in, in prison for using the these drugs. I also have a, a drug court in Northern Colorado. I also have a, an adult diversion program. I also have a, a number of resources that we use to try to get people off of drugs so they don't commit crimes. So really, I think prosecutors are trying to deal with both sides of this, the enforcement as well as the, the demand side. Of it. If you had your way, would you, would you bring back prohibition? For alcohol? Yeah. No, not at all. Although adults have been able to still have the same problems for people who are addicted to it, they need treatment for it. Same thing with gambling. This doesn't fall in the same category for you. I, I think it is. Um, I, I think there is a way um, of of. Uh, making marijuana legal that most of us could live with. I don't think this is the way. What would that way be? Well, I, I don't think it's putting it in the Constitution. I think it is uh, allowing the legislature to try to deal with it in a way that kids don't um, have more access to it and um, adults uh, at a certain age are, are able to, to use marijuana. Maybe it's just the fact that mar medical marijuana is a farce and it has really become the way for uh, folks. If you don't have the ambition to go to a chiropractor and say you have a bad back and get a card, then you don't really deserve to smoke marijuana. Hey, if, you, but if you can't go down to the county clerk house, uh, county clerks to, to get registered, that's why we put people on the street to, to help you out. The same, there is same nothing, way. absolutely nothing in this amendment, constitutional amendment, that restricts the state legislature from making the most draconian penalties p that you can imagine against people selling to two kids against children using. All of that is still completely and totally at, in the legislature's purview. Nothing in this constitution, constitutional amendment pre prevents it. And I would be for making the strongest laws possible because when we go back to, I think it was your point about, uh, you know, you don't have, you, you don't usually see people standing around a schoolhouse saying, come here little kid, <clears throat> want to buy some beer? And, and the reason is because the risk reward ratio is so bad. Why would you do that? you risk going to prison, where on the other hand, you can sell it freely to adults. So there is no benefit to do it that way. Let's take it out of, let's take marijuana out of the arena in which that now we find, now find ourselves, uh, it, we find it, and that is people pushing it, you know, trying to get kids to use it. I'm not saying that it, they all go away. I'm, I'm just saying I believe it will be easier for us to restrict that ability for kids to get it if we legalize it and, in fact, regulate it. Won't Colorado become a destination place for, for stoners? Is it going to be the Amsterdam of the United States? I, I suppose uh, that's possible, but then you go back and how does that fit with the, uh, the challenge or, or the uh, objection that uh, it would hurt our economy? Here they all come. All right, we've got a couple minutes. They're going to spend money, right? Got a couple minutes left here. If we jump in, in the future, let's say it's five years down the road, this hideous thing passes. What's different in Colorado? 
I, I think we have um, an even worse education system in Colorado, K through that 12. That ain't possible. No way, impossible. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to believe, but, but with <laughs> higher suspensions, higher expulsions, less motivated kids, we are going to see higher dropout rates. And, and you talk about businesses being attracted to Colorado um, and some you know business owners um, enjoying uh, some weed from time to time, they are going to rely on employees to do their work. And if, those, if we don't have a, a job pool here, uh, we're, we're going to have those issues. So I, I, I think um, it primarily affects uh, those those kids. Um, as to you know gaining tax revenue from this, um, not many legislatures, and I doubt uh, legislators, and I doubt Tom um, in his past life would have appreciated a constitutional amendment that said you shall vote for this tax increase. Um, I think we we don't necessarily we aren't necessarily going to get the tax revenue that uh, this amendment suggests. Five years in the future, what does Colorado look like? Pretty much what it looks like today, a beautiful place to live with people being a little more free than they are today. All right, let's finish it up. 30 seconds each. Tell me why yes. Um, if you really think about what the right, what the role of government should be in our lives, and if you think through this thing, not rely on emotion. We challenge our liberal friends constantly on the basis of the fact that we believe they operate on emotion far more than we do. We operate on logic. I'm saying, Let's use logic here, not emotion. Pass this thing. Tell me why to vote no. I think my friends on the right have outsmarted uh, their common sense. Um, this is a, a an idea whose time has not come. It's going to affect our kids. It's going to affect business, and it, it will be bad for Colorado in the long run. People want to get more information on the yes side. Where do they go? I have no you have idea. no idea. You're stoned. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Google that. People want some more information on the no side. Where do they go? V vote no on 64.com. You see, that's what happens when you're not you stoned. Smoke. There you go. You get to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Gentlemen. I have no idea what the website is. <laughs> Tom, thank you. Thank you so much, Ken. And thank you. Do me a favor and join me on Sunday afternoons on KHOW at 630 KHOW. Check out the Independence Institute, independenceinstitute.org. Tell a friend. We'll see you next time. I don't. <laughs>